All right, so just FYI, right? If you go to Corpy's World, or there is there is the link, right? Also in Canvas. Um, but if you go to lesson videos, right? Shared folder, screencasts. Uh, if you click in calculus in 21, 22, there it is. You got A, B, B, C, and then I call it the Landevin AP reviews. Landevin, okay? Yeah, it is good stuff. And then inside there, uh, number two was the Landevin slope fields. So they did that the other morning and he actually looked at a free response question that was from last year. So um, there's resources out there for you, right? So that's good stuff. All right, um, but for us, I'm gonna be content if you can create a slope field and I'm gonna be content if you can uh, pick one out of a lineup, okay? So creating the slope field, remember, it's not that hard, it's a little bit tedious. What you really need to focus on is your slopes that are the following, right? You need to focus carefully on your slope. Oops, that is zero. A slope of zero, you better make that horizontal, right? You really need to focus in on a slope that is one, that's gotta be as close to 40 freaking five as you can, right? You also gotta be mindful of a slope of negative one. That's also gotta be as close to a slope of 45 as you can. And then the other one is if you get a slope of, uh, non-zero over zero, right? Because what would that be? Some type of infinity, and that would manifest as a what? Vertical tangent line, a vertical tangent line. Yeah, so those are, those are the four staples, and then everything else is gonna be compared to those, right? If a slope is two, is it steeper than 45? If the slope is one half, is it less steep? So on and so forth, okay? So those are the big ones. All right. You okay? Okay. All right. Um, so then it's just a matter of, of carefully uh, plotting them on there. All right. So um, we, 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 could, uh, we could skip this one. Um, you want to? You want to do it? Let's do it. Let's do it real quickly. All right. Um, sketch the slope field for the differential equation and then sketch the solution curve that passes through the origin. So uh, we're going to assume there's nine indicated points here, right? Three, three, and three. Um, this one is definitely non-separable. We're not gonna be able to separate the variables, but we can still get a view of what the solution looks like. So um, again, if you, if you do it in your head, that's great. But if not, you need to go off to your workbench and just plug in random values. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the origin, right? When X and Y are both zero, I get a slope of negative one. So that's your 45, looks like that. Um, how about at one zero? That's gonna be one plus zero minus one, that's zero. So there's a horizontal tangent line. And again, um, what would you do if, if you were using a lead pencil on a black and white copy? How do you get it to show up? You just keep going, right? Yeah, you make it, yeah, you trace over it a couple of times. Um, what about over here at negative one, zero? Well, negative one squared is still one, so we still get zero, so that's still horizontal. Um, how about up on the next one? How about zero, one? Zero, one is gonna also be zero, right? So there's a zero there, horizontal. How about negative one, positive one? That's gonna give you one plus one is two, two minus one is one. So that's positive one. Ooh, that's your positive 45. That's kind of interesting, right? How about the point one, one? One, one is gonna be also one, right? 45s. And then down here, uh, negative one, negative one is still one, 45s. And then how about, Zero, one, zero, negative one, sorry. It's gonna be zero, horizontal. And then uh, in the bottom right corner, one, negative one is gonna be one, right? So that's a really funky looking one, right? If you looked at that, you might actually think that you got the origin wrong, yes? The origin looks like it's kind of out of place. So you might try it again, right? What do you do when you plug in a zero, zero? Uh, you do get negative one. So uh, the way this would be graded, is uh, again, we would look at your zeros to make sure they are all perfectly flat or as close to perfectly flat as we can oh, on a spherical earth, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then we'll look at all of the other slopes to see if they are relatively the same. So that, that criteria would be, first of all, is this close to a 45 degree slope? And then, is that steepness the same as the other ones that you drew? 
Okay, so you gotta, you're not gonna be able to copy and paste, remember, okay? And then of course, is the one in the middle, um, the derpy one, right? Derp, right? Is it a negative? And it is, okay. So you, you get a check for each of those. All right, now draw the solution that passes through the origin. So the, the solution curve, remember, and it goes back to the definition, where was it, right here? It's gotta be a continuous function, okay? So as soon as you hit any type of discontinuity, you don't sketch it anymore, all right? So if I come down here through the origin, I have to make sure, well, I'll just use the same line call. I gotta make sure that I hit the origin. So typically you're gonna wanna put like a, a dot there, like accent it, make it a little bit bigger. And now you go with the flow, all right? I'm gonna go with the flow to the right first. So this tells you that you launch out of the origin at a 45, yeah? And then <laughs> what is the information indicating? Going to the right somehow, yes? It looks like I'm curving. All right, it's kind of pointing me exit that way. And maybe if I were to keep going, maybe it would do that, right? But I don't do that. I just draw it to the end of the graph. Looks like that. And now I'll go out to the left and I'm launched out on a 45. And then again, the trend looks like it's turning me in this direction. So it, it looks like it could have what type of symmetry? Origin. Oh, x-axis? X, no, so x-axis would not be, well, it could be, but in this case, there's no x-axis symmetry. It wouldn't be y-axis, right? It's the rotational one. Remember, the rotational is odd. So it looks like it could be an odd function. And that's just with nine points, um, which is not a whole lot. So you'd get, you'd get another check for that. So this would be three checks out of nine if it were on a free response. Not so bad, that's a third of the points. Remember when we looked at the average score from the scoring statistics from all six questions for the A, B. Remember they hovered around three-ish and there was one that got up to four. So if you're averaging like a third of the points on every question, you're gonna pass, right, with the three. So even if this was a free response and there were still like two or three parts after this, getting those three points right there, bless you, um, you're in the game for a passing score. All right. Um, now, of course, software, um, as the video kind of showed about Pi, the software could do a much better job. So um, it looks like it's really, it looks really twisted up in the middle there, you know? But if you use more points, you can kind of see what happens. We did have it right on the inside. Um, it's real twisted, but then it kind of levels out on the edges. And so this is what it looks like from negative three to three. Now, of course, that's a lot of uh, slopes. Uh, the one we drew, you can see through the origin, kind, kind of the same, right? For the limit information that we had, it was pretty good, right? It actually does not turn like this. Remember I said it looked like maybe, maybe it looked like it did this, but it doesn't, right? It doesn't. It actually, we can tell now that it curves and goes horizontal. As it comes back up though, it increases. So it almost starts to look like just a normal negative X or positive X cubed graph. All right, but anyway, there you go. It's just nice to see um the big picture really if you will but in no in no circumstance are we able to actually find the equation for any of these specific solutions or particular solutions right why can we not find the actual equation for these particular solutions yeah we can't separate y and x we can't separate the variables but thank goodness um that we can still get a visual of what the solutions look like okay so there you go, that's slope fields. Um, here, here's one, here's a little piece that was from an actual AP exam. So um, if you actually see what their graph looks like, we'll go ahead and do this one. They actually have like nice looking graphs labeled X and Y, and they put little, little dots on the points that they want you to. So let's take a look at this, example four. Uh, for dy dx equals y plus two over X, where X is not zero. That's kind of an important thing. If they ever warn you about X not equaling number or Y not equaling number, it's probably because it's not supposed to be that number and it may come back to bite you if you don't remember that. All right, so part A, on the axis provided, sketch a slope field for the given differential equation at the how many points? Eight points indicated. All right, let's see. There's one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hey, they don't have any dots up and down the Y axis. You think that's on purpose? Yeah, because what's another name for the y-axis? X equals zero. And they told us that what? X 
can be zero. So what, what if you accidentally or irresistibly, I should say, went ahead and drew some slopes on the y-axis? That would be bad. You could lose points, right? If you volunteer extra information, it has to be correct. Otherwise, you lose points, okay? But let's see what the fuss is all about. Now, there's a quick way to do this. Instead of just like randomly picking points, if your differential equation is factored, okay? If it's factored, you can actually speed up or expedite the process. Now, this one is factored because it's something divided by something, right? So let's look at it. I want to see where is dy dx equal to zero? Well, any fraction is equal to zero in the what's zero? The what? The numerator is zero, right? So if you set y plus two equal to zero and solve, you get y equals negative two. So what does that mean? That means all along the horizontal line, y equals negative two, the slopes are zero. And you could draw little bitty horizontal tangent lines there. Well, look at your graph. Lay bummer, which is French for the bummer. We don't even go down as far as negative two, do we? Shoot, we're only graphing it as low as negative one. But had we come down here and there had been negative two and there had been some dots, we could draw a little bitty horizontal tangent lines there. Got it? All right. So anyway, that didn't really help. But uh, hey, what about this? Where is the derivative undefined? Yeah, when the denominator equals zero, okay? So that's when x equals zero. Well, x can't be zero, right? But if it could, what type of tangent lines would we draw there? Vertical tangent lines. Yeah, straight up. Okay. But anyway, alas, alas, we're not drawing it there. So in this sense, in this case, it didn't really help to have it factored to find those values. So uh, I guess we're just left to doing what? Just, uh, so yeah, plug and chug. I just, for lack of a better term, sledgehammer, right? No finesse. So let's go ahead and, uh, and, and again, if you want to go off to the side in your workbench to do your calculations, that's fine. How about negative two, zero? Let's see. Negative two, zero. We get two over negative two, which is negative one. All right. So negative one, that's a 45. Now I'm not going to use the snap feature, but I can use this other point right here kind of as a target, right? To kind of line up my 45 degree line. Yeah. All right. How about negative one, zero? Negative one, zero is going to be two over negative one, which is negative two. Okay. Now I got to draw it steeper than that. So how about, uh, how about that? As y'all are my witness, does that look steeper? Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Um, how about at zero, zero? Let's plug that in. Zero, zero. No, you get a vertical. No, 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 no. Okay, good. How about at negative one, one, negative one, one, negative one, one would give you negative three. Oh, criminy, criminy. I got to go steeper than negative two. Okay. I'm kind of running out of room already. That looks, that's almost vertical, but is it vertical? No, let me, let me try it again. I want to draw. Uh, now, is that visually steeper than the one below it? Yeah. Can y'all tell? Yeah. I can tell as well. But if they ask me to draw a slope of negative four, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to rebel. I'm just, I'm going to close my test booklet and walk out of the test, you know? As you should. Yeah, as I should, because I'm not going to be able to show it without going vertical. Well, guess what? I'm thinking college board's not going to ask you that. They realize that, right? So how about at negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, we plug it in and we get, we get negative one, don't we? Negative one. So that's the same as it was at negative two, zero. So you can kind of imagine that these are lining up here like that. Okay, and then I'll get rid of that, you know. So you'll have a pencil, so you could shade very lightly, you know, shade very lightly, and then come back and erase. They should be, it's almost like there's a line connecting them, right? It's almost like you do a straight line <coughs> through here, snapped it, hang on, drew a straight line through there, right? And then you come back with your eraser, right, partial, and then you kind of get rid of this stuff here. They should be like they're on the same line. Now I'm doing this like with the stylus pencil, but you could do this with the real pencil pencil, right? What do you call a real pencil pencil? It's not a stylus pencil. 
An apple pencil. It's a pencil. A pencil. Oh, a Ticonderoga. Oh, or a Corpus Superstar pencil. Or my favorite, my other favorite, a Murado, a Murado Black Warrior. Those are good too. All right. Um, so we got we got those. We got those four taken care of. Now let's come over here to uh, the other side. Um, just one zero. How about one zero? And be careful. Well, you're plugging in a one for X, which is the first point in the coordinate. But Y is the first variable you come across when you read it. So you got to be deliberate, right? So if I plug in a one zero, that's a one in the bottom and a two in the top. That is a two, right? Well, a two should be just as steep as a negative two, but in the positive direction. So, wow, it's kind of challenging. This one has to be just as steep as this one. Do those look kind of the same steepness, like mirror images of each other? Okay, thank you. You're a nice grader. All right. Uh, you, then you can start seeing patterns. How about one negative one? Positive one. So that's going to be uh, 45. Again, you can use the point right here to help you. And hey, how about two zero? Is that also one? It is one. So again, you can kind of imagine like that and then come back and erase. I spy some symmetry, right? I'm thinking maybe at one one, it's gonna be three. Let's see, plug in a one one and yep, sure enough, it's three. And so we get boy, howdy, this one here. That looks good to me, right? So these are basically reflections of each other across the Y axis. That's gonna be worth um, more than likely two checks. No horizontal tangents here. You'd probably get one check for your 45s and then you get another check for the relative steepness on these right here, right? Steep, steeper, steepest. And thank goodness we didn't have steepest, est, est, right? All right. Letter B, sketch the solution curve that passes through the point one, one, through the point one, one. Okay, so I'm picking my flavor, unicorn blue, yeah. Um, and then here we go, through the point one, one. So I make sure that I put a little circle there and now I, I launch out at a slope of, yeah. That's not one one. I'm an idiot. Did you see what I put in? I, I, I updated Canvas. Thanks to Lauren. Uh, I put the PDF of the 15 question quiz, but we won't have another one tomorrow. Those 15 questions for the rest of the week. Some of them are easy because they're just slope fields. But I put the PDF there in Canvas. Thanks to Lauren. And I put on there, sing with me now, everybody. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Did you just, yeah. Anyway. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Thank you. So here it is. So there's the dot. All right, now, um, ooh, careful. I launch out, it, look, it looks like as I go up, what's happening with the slopes? One, two, three. So as I launch out at a slope of three, I kind of need to get a little bit steeper, but I don't have much farther to go. So there you go. And then as I come back down, three, two, one. Ah, ah, ah. What do I do when I get to the uh, Y axis? I stopped, right. I don't want, I want to go up to X equals zero, but not. So what could I actually do to help inform someone that I'm going up to, but not including? Oh my gosh, just a circle. An open circle. Yes, very good. Now, should I continue on the other side? No, no, we stop. We stop. The slope field has to be a continuous function, okay? So it has to have essentially pass both the horizontal and vertical line test because it's a function of both X and Y, all right? So you stop right there. Now, what if, what if you didn't curve it quite, what if you curved it faster than I did and yours actually came in and was right here on the Y axis a little bit above, is that okay? Yeah, uh, what, if you, what if you were so leisurely with, oh, I have the partial on again, Ooh, that's weird, okay? Um, <laughs> uh, thank you, yeah. What if I came down, but I didn't, I didn't like, and then, and then I went like that. No. Would that be okay? No. Ish, it would, yeah, yeah. Because again, we're just going with the flow, but now I'm exiting the bottom before I get to the Y axis. So I don't even have to worry about the open circle. Okay. So that would also kind of work. <clears throat> but for this problem here, it is a little bit more accurate if you do this. And then I don't know if it's at zero negative one, but if I, if I curve it into the y-axis, I got to put the open circle. And then I stop, okay? Hammer time, right? Good. All right. On a dime. Comments, questions? This would be another check. So, again, that's going to be th three points more than likely out of nine on a free response.
Comments, questions? Barbie, Barbie's birthday today, 1959. She debuted at the Toy Fair in New York. And since then, over a billion have been sold. That makes Barbie a slave, right? Selling Barbie? Yeah. Slave to little kids, right? When did Ken come along? Oh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Because women who seek to be equal to men seriously lack ambition. Right, ladies? All right. Let's look at uh, let's look at some multiple choice type things. There are two types of questions that you're going to be asked when it comes to matching up graphs with equations. Number one, you might have to match up the equation with the general solution. Okay, the differential equation with the general solution, or you might have to match up the uh, slope field with the um, Either, I'm sorry, either the equation that generated it, the differential equation, or the equation of the general solution. That's what I'm trying to say. You have a slope field. You either match it to the differential equation that created it or to the general solution equation. Those are the two types. So let's look at example five. This one says match each slope field with the equation of the general solution that it could possibly represent. Now, these types of questions are just like, do you know your parent functions. Do you know your parent functions? If you don't know your parent functions, you better sit down and memorize those mother functions, okay? All right. Where do you go to get a list of those mother functions, right? Corpy's classroom, chapter P. Corpy's world, yeah, Corpy's world. Yeah, A, B, and then at the very top, right at the very top, um, you've got uh, pre-cal stuff to know cold. Hey, parent function catalog. There it is, look at them, there they are. There they are. You got to know that, right? You really don't, you don't have to really know this one. That's the step function. Uh, but everything else in there is a uh, fair game. Look, hola, senor Salta, right? Buenos okay. Dias. Buenos dias. All right. So let's go ahead and look at it. Um, if we look at this graph right here. Yeah, it looks, uh, I mean, if you, if you're not sure what the general solution is, just drop in somewhere. I'm going to drop in at the origin. And now you go with the flow. You're like, whoa, hey, it's turning me around again. Whoa, it's turning. And then you come this way. Whoa, it's turning me around. Whoa. Okay. And now that looks like it could be a family of what? Is it sine or cosine? It's got to be sine. Yeah. We're learning these right now in pre -cal. It's Sahala. I don't know if Miss Lincoln uses Sahala. I don't know if Miss Skirhawk uses Sahala. But I name these Sahala. Axis high, axis low, axis. So this would be a Sahala. Cosine would be Chala, right? That would start high, axis low, axis high. So, and it could be it could be regular old sine of X, or it could be sine of X plus five, or it could even be two sine of X. We're not really sure what the amplitude is, but it's gotta be some type of sine of X function, yeah? So now we come down to the answer choices. Is there a sine function in there? Oh my gosh, there is, there it is, okay? There it is. All right, so that's matching the graph to the equation. That could be flipped around. It could be, it could be, here's the equation, and now you have answer choices that are the graphs, right? So let's, uh, let's look at that. The other one over here, could it be y equals one? What would the general solution for y equals one look like? A bunch of horizontal lines, right? Yeah. What would the ones for X look like? 45. Just a bunch of 45 lines going that way, right? X squareds would just be a bunch of smiles up and down, right? X cubes, we know what that would look like. That's gonna be kind of like the first one that we looked at, yeah. Yeah, just, just a bunch of uh, disco dancers up and down, right? Oh, oh, look, yeah, could this one be? Could this one be the disco dancer? Let's see, let's drop in right here and we go to the right and it's like, yep. And we go to the left and it could be, yep. Now notice, notice here on the periphery, we have um, little secant or tangent lines that appear to be vertical, right? Now there's the deal here. Um, are they, if they're truly vertical, the slope would be infinite and the function wouldn't exist there. But it could be that instead of having a slope of infinity here, it's really a slope of like, 10 uh, or 10 million, right? So it doesn't necessarily have to be a vertical asymptote, but it could be. So this could definitely be an X cubed. So this guy could possibly be that. 
What about one over X squared? What does he look like? Y'all remember what one over X squared looks like? X can't be zero because it's a vertical asymptote and it's positive everywhere. This is your, I call it the volcano graph. It has a horizontal asymptote and a vertical asymptote and it's up on both sides. Uh, that doesn't look like a volcano graph. Cosine, does it look like cosine? No, cosine is chala, right? Which is the mustache kind of chala. Now, what about this one? What does the natural log of the absolute value of X look like? Well, we know the natural log of X looks like this. And so we can have all of these guys that are above and below. But when you take the absolute value of X, yes, it flips across the Y axis and we have both branches now. So it, it would look kind of like a fountain, right? Yeah, like that, like a squirting fountain at the top. Um, does this look like a squirting fountain? No, no. So from the answers that are there, it's gonna be an X cubed. But here, I'm gonna ask you one other question. It could also, based upon the qualitative description, if X cubed were not an answer choice, what other answer choice could be there that would work? Bang! Tangent of X. It could be either an X cubed or tangent of X. Because if it's tangent of X, these would be vertical asymptotes, right? So either one of them would work. Got it? Nice. Know thy parent functions. All right. Um, here's an actual question from the AP exam. Uh, we'll say it was from 1972. I'm just making that up. But it was an actual question. The slope field from a certain differential equation is shown above. Which of the following could be a specific solution? All right, so we're matching it up again with the specific solution. Could it be an X squared? <laughs> no. Could it be E to the X? No, no. Could it be E to the negative X? What does that look like? That takes e to the x and the negative reflects it across the what? The y-axis. If your x's are opposite, think about it. Positive x and negative x are trading places. They trade places across the y-axis. So that turns into exponential decay. Does this look like exponential decay? No. Ah, so it must be cosine, right? <laughs> no. What about ln of x, Mendeley? ln of x, ln of x, yes, ln of x. And notice we're not showing the vertical asymptote there. Very important. Are we matching the graph to the solution? Hey, what if what if the answer choice natural log of x were not there, but natural log of x plus five were? Would that still be correct? Yes, because it says which of the following could could be a specific solution? Yeah. Plus C. Okay, great. Now, here's the other type of question. Instead of asked to being matched to the general solution and you using your knowledge of parent functions, this is the more fun one. Match it to the differential equation that generated it. Okay. So let, let's look at it. Let's look at it. We'll do it both ways. Let's start with A and try to match it to one of the equations. All right. So this could be a multiple choice question, right? Given this single graph, which of the following differential equations generated it? And your answer choices are equations. So here's, here's what you wanna do. You wanna look for trends. First thing you wanna do is number one, look for zeros. Look for zero slopes. Do we have any horizontal tangent lines here? Yes, yes. It appears that they're up and down at X equals zero. So here's what that means. When x equals zero, dy dx must equal what? Zero, regardless of y. Because notice this can be like zero, 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 one, zero, two, zero, three. The y doesn't matter. So now you go through and you do process of elimination. Plug into zero. If you don't get a zero, it's out. E to the zero is one, not zero. So that's not it. How about here? Zero over. That's possible, it's a possible one, yeah. How about this one? Two minus, what the, there's not even an X in there. How is that supposed to be? No, sorry. How about this one? When X is zero, do I get zero? Sure do, totally, so totally, dude. 
And how about this one? Zero minus, no, zero minus five is, no, no. And how about this one? Sine of zero is zero. All right, so based upon that, we got it down to three. We got it down to three. Now, if you know what the antiderivative looks like, then you can get it. But let's pretend like we don't. Once you, once you look for zeros, now you look for trends in quadrants, okay? Look for trends in quadrants. So notice that everywhere to the right of zero, when X is greater than zero, what type of slopes do I have? Positive, okay? So let's go through in the remaining candidates. If I plug in a positive X, I better get out a positive number every time. Is that gonna be true here? Positive X divided by any Y? No, because it depends on what Y is. So <laughs> nice try. You made it to round two. How about this guy? When X is positive, is it positive? Yeah. And then this guy here. Sine of any positive angle is positive? <laughs> no. Try sine of three pi halves, buddy. That's negative one. Eh, eh. So process of elimination, boom. I, I know it's this one, okay? Now, let's say there were still two more. You got other trends, right? Notice to the left of zero, you have negative slopes, okay? For any X, regardless of Y. Now, of course, here's what I was saying. If you happen to know what the antiderivative looks like, what is the antiderivative of X with respect to X? One F X squared plus C. That's gonna be your family of parabolas. Is this a general solution that's a family of parabolas? Yeah. So most of the time though, you're not gonna know what the general solution is when you're matching it up to the differential equation. All right. So that one matches up to, uh, we'll say, say four, IV. All right. Now let's do it the other way. Let's say that you have, um, let's, let's, pick, let's pick this one here. Um, let's pick the five. Given this differential equation, which of those remaining graphs um, is the slope field generated by it? Well, now you look at trends again from the equation. You're like, okay, when does it equal zero? That's kind of always an important one. When does it equal zero? It equals zero when X minus Y equals zero, right? Which is when X equals Y. But if I flip that around, that's when Y equals X. If I were to graph Y equals X, what would that look like? Yeah, it's your 45 degree line. So what does that mean in terms of slopes? That means all up and down that line, every time X and Y are equal to each other, the slope is gonna be zero, right? So I'm gonna look for the graph that has like steps going up along the line Y equals zero. So I know it's not A, how about B? Nah, nope, not B. How about C? Nope. How about F? Yeah, nope. E? Ooh, possibly, possibly, right? And how about D? Nah. So guess what? I know it's E. I know it's E. Now, let's say there was still another one. What else could we do here to eliminate if they're down to two? Now we could say, okay, when is the derivative positive? When is dy dx greater than zero? Well, that's when x minus y is greater than zero. That's when x is greater than y or when y is less than x, okay? So I'm gonna have positive slopes anytime y is less than x. So if I again graph the line y equals x, this is gonna be everything below here, right? Those are all the times where the Y value is less than the X value. And so I should have what type of slopes there? Positive, do I? Below that line are all my slopes positive? Yes, right. And then, and then you can do the same thing. When is the derivative negative? Well, you're gonna see that's when Y is greater than X. So everywhere above that line, we have negative slopes, okay? So really it comes down to the zeros first, and then you look at trends. And sometimes it's not just to the right of the y-axis. Sometimes you might actually have to look in specific quadrants, okay? So this one matches up with V. All right, let's do it the other way again. Let's go back to the other version. Given this graph of B, which of the remaining, um, let's see, we, we already got rid of four. So this one's already off, this one's already off. 
Which one does B line up with? Well, it could be three. Notice, notice in this case, when Y equals, I don't know if it's one, two, or three, but let's just say it's like one, maybe one. Let's just say when Y equals two, or it could be when Y equals three. I don't, have, I don't know the scale on the Y axis, but I do know that regardless of X now, when Y is some positive constant, it's gonna be zero every time for any X value. Let's see if that works, okay? On this one here, regardless of the X value, do I always get zero? Nope. Am I, I'm on a different set. I was like, what the hell? How about this one? Regardless of X, for any value of X here, when Y is two, do I get zero? No, 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 no. How about this one? For any value of X, when Y is two or three, I get zero. Nope, nope, nope. How about this one? For any value of X, when Y is two, I get zero. Heck yeah, there it is, there it is, okay? So yeah, and now, and now again, look for, if there's still another candidate, do this. Now that I know that that's two, when Y is bigger than two, what type of slopes do I have? Negative slopes, right? Let's try it out. Pick a number bigger than two. Three, okay. Two minus three is what type of number? Negative, boom. Okay, so that looks good. And then of course you could look below when Y is less than two, I should get positive slopes. Pick a number smaller than two. One, two minus one is positive. Yep, 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 we got it, okay. Um, and now of course, um, sine of X, the antiderivative sine of X is what? Negative cosine. Does this look like a negative cosine? Yeah, it does, right? Because instead of chala, remember, yeah, the highs and lows switch and you get its bizarro twin, clahal. <laughs> Clahal, what's up, Clahal? Right, and then of course, and then of course, the last one. This one is the super easy one because e to the x is its own grandpa and its own grandson, so the general solution looks the same. All right, everyone okay with that? All right, so um, I'm going to let you kind of look at those uh, on your own. Well, let's look at example nine. All right, I go to where? Number nine. The slope field for the differential equation is shown at right. Do you see it? I see it. I spy a slope field. Which statement is true for all solutions of the differential equation? So the, these are fun types of questions. I call these the multiple, multiple choice questions, right? One, two, and three, and then it's combinations. So we're looking for which one has to be true, right? Everywhere. Is it true that when X is less than zero, that means to the left of the Y axis, the solutions are decreasing. Well, here's the y-axis. If the solutions are decreasing to the left of the y-axis, what should the sign of the slopes be? Negative. Well, they're negative here in quadrant three, but no, heck no. So nice try. Now here's how you do these questions. One is not gonna be in the answer. So now you can go through and eliminate any answer choice that has one in it. And with that alone, we got it down to a one and three. All solutions level off near the x-axis. Does that look true? Yeah, that's, that's a weird way of saying that there's probably a horizontal asymptote there, right? Yeah, so drop in from above and start following the trend. Drop in from below, start following the trend. They're all converging towards, um, yeah, like Ukraine is right here, right? And then this is Russia. Right, they're all converging on Ukraine, but um, there's a giant wall. There's there's a giant wall here that's built out of the pride and the fortitude and the bravery and the sacrifices that the entire Ukrainian people are putting up. Yes, being pulled by one Ukrainian tractor. Yes. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So this one's true, right? This one's true. So now I know it has to have it has to have two in it. So uh, it could be that one. Uh, no, nah, sorry, not that one. Or it could be this one. Ah, uh, shuck. So it does. Sometimes you can get the answer without even going to the third one. Have you realized that before? Yeah, but we do have to look at it. For y greater than zero, all solutions are increasing. So y 
greater than zero, that's above the x-axis, all my solutions are increasing. That means all the slopes are what? Positive, is that true? So true. That is so true. So it is one and three, which is answer choice D, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oops. Oops, said Putin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two and three, which is answer choice D. Yeah. Okay. Um, dang, dang. Let's, let's, let's keep on keeping on. I want to skip these, but I'm like, nah, I have it there for a reason. The slope field for the differential equation dy dx equals, holy moly smokers, will have vertical segments when? Vertical segments when? Well, what do we know about vertical tangent lines? What's the slope? D and E because it's some type of infinity, right? And remember, that's when we get when the derivative, vertical tangent lines are when the derivative is non-zero over zero, right? We did this before when we had implicit differentiation. So that's when the denominator 4x plus 2y equals zero, okay? Now, here's the deal. There's two variables there in one equation. So I can't solve it um, numerically. So if you look at your answers, your answers look like they're all solved for Y in terms of X, see that? So let's go ahead and solve this for Y in terms of X, like we're back in algebra one. Two Y would equal negative four X. And then I'll divide through by two and I get Y equals negative dos X, right? Is that an answer choice? Yeah. Now, here's the deal. I don't even have to check the top. If those values of y made the top zero as well, I would throw them out, right? Because it has to be non-zero or zero. But in this case, I don't even have to check that. Why? Based on the answer choices? It has to be that, right? Because if it did make it zero over zero, there would have to be an answer choice that says at no values, right? or values don't exist. And because, because it doesn't say that, I don't have to check. All right, very good, very good. I'll skip that, I'll skip that. Skip, skip, skip to Malou, skip, skip to Malou. Um, Landon did this one on the, um, in the Landevin session. This is an actual question from the uh, Aloha test in 2007. The Pacific Islanders get form B because of the time difference. Um, and they used to release those, they don't need more. So, uh, if you want to check this one out, um, it's actually pretty good. Uh, check out the Landevin tapes. Um, yeah, the Aloha test. Um, let's see. Let's look at, did we do this one? Did you do this one in the Aloha or in the, in the Landevin session? Let's go ahead and do example 16. I, I want to do this one because it's an actual AP question uh, from the year 2000, um, BC6. This was like right before y'all's time, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And this was the last test on the AP exam. So you're finishing strong. So it says, consider the differential equation given by dy dx equals x times y squared minus one. Now, how, how do you consider an equation? What do, you, what do you, you stroke your beard a little bit? Hmm, yeah, hmm, right? So I'm considering it. Now, what do I notice about it? I do notice that it's a function of x, my independent variable, and why my dependent variable, and hey, thank goodness, it's already factored. F yeah, right? Factor yeah, good. On the axis provided, sketch a slope field for the given differential equation at the 11, the 11 points indicated. Wow, 11, wow, that rhymes with uh, a Kevin. Okay, and seven, right? And heaven, and Devin. All right, so I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna choose lead gray. I'm gonna do it in monotone as if I'm taking the exam, all right? All right, so here's a quick way to expedite it. It's already factored on my workbench, dy dx equals zero when x equals zero or y equals what? One, right? Set each factor equal to zero and solve. Well, man, that means that everywhere along the vertical line x equals zero and along the horizontal line y equals one, if, if, the, if there's a dot there, all I got to do is put a horizontal tangent line piece, yes? So let's see. Um, X equals zero is also known as the y-axis. So, hey, I've got a, there's a horizontal tangent line. Yes, sir? If you put the line on somewhere there isn't a dot, will you get points off? If, 
If it's correct, no. But often they tell you not to put it at a point because it's undefined. And if you put a, a line where it's undefined, then you're gonna lose points. Okay, do those look horizontal enough to you? Okay, me too. Okay, that's good. Um, you know, I'm just gonna put another point up here and just keep going, right? No, 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 no. All right, and y equals one. That's the horizontal line, y equals one. Hey, that's right here, right here, right here, right here. There we go, there we go. Looking nice, right? So right there, I've already got five, seven, seven out of the 11. Hey, that's like a store, right? And how many more do I have to go? Four. Just the four, all right? So it's a store. Which also rhymes with, we want more. Yeah. Tell us some Scottish folk lore. All right. Negative one, zero. Negative one, zero. Negative one, zero. Now, I'm going to write this down on my workbench, right? At negative one, zero. There's too much at risk. I don't want to mess this up. My brain is like stupid Swiss cheese, right? So I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to get a negative one times zero minus one. That's negative one squared. That does turn into negative one. Okay, boom. So that's my workbench. So now I come over to the point negative one zero and I put negative one. Now again, notice I can use I can use the other points kind of as my target. Okay. Now out of curiosity, let me go to one zero. At the point one zero, what would the derivative be? Yeah, it would be one times negative one squared. It's positive one. Yeah. So now it's going to, and I can use those others to line it up. Looks like that. So these two have to be the same steepness. All right, and then I'm seeing some symmetry here again. So how about negative one, negative one? dy dx is gonna equal negative one, negative one squared, it's negative one? Negative four, yeah, because this is negative one minus one. This is negative two. And now it's negative four. Oh my, how do I do negative four? Make it a little bit more steep. Right, just, just make, make it, it steeper because, thank you. How much steeper? Well, if you notice, that's the last one you have to do. So you have anything between negative one and almost infinity to draw that in there, right? Anything steeper. Now, when you plug in one, one, you're gonna get positive four, you can verify that. So here's the deal. You can't copy and paste. so. You got to make sure that it's the same steepness as the other one. Got it? There you go. And you just earn yourself two checks. Two checks. Hello. I told him I oh, yeah. Yeah. Good call. Good call there. All right. So, anyway, did we answer the entire question A? Did it ask us to draw a particular solution through anything? No. Did I do all 11 points? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Yeah. Did I put any phantom points somewhere else that now I'm going to erase? No. Okay, good. Boom. We're done with part A. All right. So far, so good, right? Confidence is just through the roof, right? Oof. Use the slope field for the given differential equation. That's what we just created to explain. That means words, right? Why a solution curve could not look like that. Oh, well, duh. If you just look at it, it don't work. Yeah, there you Yeah, well, let, let's stick with the slopes to zero because it could be an asymptote for anything that doesn't have a y value of one. But remember, if the general solution has a y value of one, the solution itself could be the horizontal line. But the zero slopes are what I'm noticing, right? When y equals one, my slope should be zero. Look at this solution curve. When y equals one, are my slopes zero? No, and that's it. It's kind of like finding a counter example. All you have to do to show something is not true is find one kink in the armor. Kink, chink, chink, kink, kinky, chinky. No, it's chingy, chingy. Chingy and Chica. All right, here we go. Here we go. Um, the solution curve, the solution curve 
at y equals one should uh, have um, horizontal tangent lines or, or slopes of zero, should have slopes of zero, comma, but the given solution graph does not. Something to that effect in a complete sentence, right? The actual general solution uh, when y equals one would have to have horizontal tangent lines. You could say that as well, but the given solution when y equals one does not have a horizontal tangent line. The solution curve at y equals one should have slopes of zero, but the given solution graph does not. That, that, I think that's pretty, that's, that's good enough, right? All right, and, and that is, how many checks do you think that's worth? Do you think it's worth like seven checks? you think that's the rest of them? Man, yeah, 17, right? Now you're getting a six on the AP exam. Okay, so that's probably three checks. All right, letter C, uh, find the particular solution, y equals f of x to the given differential equation with the initial condition. Now, when it says to find the particular solution, that means that we have to solve for y, right? We actually have to solve for y, which means we're going to be able to, which means it should be separable, yes? Yeah, it didn't say separation because it said to find the particular solution. So let's go ahead and write this, dy dx equals, and we'll just write it again. It was uh, x squared or x times y minus one squared. Okay, um, step one, multiply both sides by dx. That's kind of like turning the key in the ignition, right? or now it's pushing the button, dx. Did that do the trick? No, now it's already factored, thank goodness, right? So now we just divide both sides by y minus one. So we get one over y minus one squared dy equals x dx. Did that do the trick? Yes, so there's gonna be another check. All right, now once we separate the variables, slinky, slithery, sneaky integral symbol, right? On the same line, it doesn't invalidate the previous check. Now to integrate the left side, is it worth bringing the y minus one squared to the top? I think so. Here, here's how you know whether you wanna do that or not, or if it's gonna be something else. If you brought it to the top, y minus one would be your inside function, right? What's the derivative of y minus one with respect to y? One, is that what we have in the top or only off by a constant multiple? Yeah, so it is gonna be a power rule. So to help myself, help myself, I am gonna bring it to the top. Now, on the right side, I can either A, integrate it because it's ready to go or just rewrite the integral. I'm gonna be hesitant to integrate it. I like to do both sides at the same time. All right, so now here we go. Are we off by anything on the inside function y minus one? Any correction to make? No, right? So, and there's no rider. So it's just gonna be blob to the negative two plus one is negative one. And then we divide or multiply by negative one. And then we put the blob in there. Do we need a plus C over there? Nope. Um, and then the right side is just one half X squared. And then we put plus C. So this right here could either be worth two checks or three checks. Sometimes they give you a, a separate check for each antiderivative. And sometimes they give you one check for both antiderivatives. In this case, it's probably one for both because they're both power rules. It's kind of from the same family. But you put the plus C right here, right now, right away. Yes, yes. All right, now let's find the general solution. Um, if you want to clean this up, that's negative one over Y minus one equals one half X squared plus C. What would you do algebraically here if you were solving? Multiply both sides by negative one. So we get one over Y minus one equals negative one half X squared. And what's negative one times C? Shamwell C, yeah. Now in this part, you could do, you could, you could put it over one and you could cross multiply if you wanted. But I like to do what's called the double flip -a rooney okay? If you have a proportion, one fraction equaling another fraction, you can do the double flip -a rooney which flips both sides, reciprocate both sides. 
And notice the plus C is now in the denominator. Now add one to both sides and you get one over negative one half X squared plus C plus one. There's your general solution. Now, if you wanted to, you could multiply um, by two over two to get rid of the complex fraction. Do you want to do that? No, okay, you don't have to. No, uh, we don't have to. Now we need to plug in the point zero one. At the point zero, well, I was just gonna like, it's negative one half. So we could have multiplied by like maybe even negative two over negative two and the C would have absorbed it, but it's fine. We leave it like that. Now we say at the point zero, negative one. Wait, is everyone okay with that algebraically? Okay, all right. So now we get negative one equals one over zero plus C plus one. You get a check right there for using the initial condition. Because depending on when you find C, some people can end up with different C's depending on the sham wowness of their C, all right? And now we just have to solve for C. So if I subtract one from both sides, I get negative two equals one over C. And now I can do the double flip a Rooney again, right? C over one must equal negative one over two. So now I plug it back into my general solution because I didn't get rid of the complex fraction. I'm plugging it into there. So y equals one over negative one half x squared minus one half and then plus one off to the side. And that would be another check. And now after the fact, if you want, you could multiply by negative two over negative two. Now, here's the head scratcher part. Find the range of the solution. That is what y values does this graph take on? You can go to lunch if you want. I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to multiply. Yeah, if you need to go to lunch, that's fine. I just don't want to stop the recorder. So carry on, eat whatever, go. I'm going to record this. It'll be in the shared folder. I'm going to, to answer that question, I'm going to go ahead and multiply by negative two over negative two. So I get Y equals negative two. And if I distribute in the bottom, I get X squared plus one. And that becomes plus one. All right. Now, Here's how we could figure out the range. It's actually a little bit easier than you think. This is a transformation of your parent function, y equals one over x squared plus one. Okay, and what does that graph look like? Well, it has a horizontal asymptote on the um, x-axis. It has y-axis symmetry, it's an even function, and it has a y-intercept of one. So it looks like this. And this, it kind of looks like the standard normal curve, all right? Now, based upon transformations, what does multiplying anything by a negative two do to it? It flips it across the x-axis. That's what the negative does. And then the two vertically stretches it. So instead of now being negative one, it's what? Negative two, right? So now we have the graph, there's a horizontal asymptote here and it goes down to negative two. And then what does adding one to anything do? Shifts it up one. So if I want to sketch the final graph, zero, which is the horizontal asymptote, is now up here at one. And then the point at negative two shifts up to negative one. And now it looks something like this. And now we know what the range is. The range of the solution curve is the set of all y's that are in what interval? Do we actually hit negative one? Yes. And then we go all the way up to, where's the horizontal asymptote? One, but do we actually hit it? Do we get to it? No. From part A? Yeah, yeah. Right, there you go. So um, here is zero one right here. Yeah, and you can kind of see that the general solution looks like that. Yes, yeah, okay. So it's negative one to one, non-inclusive on one, but inclusive on negative one. So yes, now Ellery, when you do that from part A, don't come in here and actually draw it, okay? Yeah, that could take away a point, all right? But you can visualize it that way. All right, thank y'all. We're essentially done with this section. Um, have a great lunch.